So um, we're going to go straight into the area of family management. Yeah. So um, what I'd like to ask you as a, as a kind of family experience, customer experience expert is that how do you manage family relationships over, over a period so stressful and anxiety creating that we've been through? What is, what is the most important thing to do to, to keep your families close and, 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 and anchored and, and on the journey with you? Yeah, well, the most important thing is to be kind of, to grow an extra ear. It's time to like listen as much as possible. Yeah. Um, we use the language around always walking in the parents' shoes. And what's happening at the moment is that there's a recent survey said that 85% of people feel that this current pandemic is the most stressful experience in their lifetime. Yeah. So everybody's carrying around this huge amount of dread and, you know, uncertainty. And um, it's not obviously business as normal. So if you're operating a childcare centre, you're under tremendous pressure to just kind of keep the business going. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, your customers, your families need kind of your care and attention and empathy with anything that you're communicating out to them. So um, a quick example from another sector, I heard this story a long time ago about a, a telecommunications customer who's, who was widowed. She didn't know how to kind of, who her husband managed all of the accounts and she started getting calls a few weeks after his funeral that, that they're going to disconnect her service because she hadn't paid the bills and they did disconnect the service and someone was just doing their job, but for life, she never will forgive them. And so what we're seeing is that people are um, leaving services because of their circumstances, their employment, um, and they might be chased for fees and things like that, which is really understandable, but there's a lack of empathy that's being played out there. And, and those people that have left will never come back. Yeah. They'll need care again, but they'll choose not to go back there. So when it comes to families and our relationship with those families, it's, it's really just listen, empathize and stay as close as possible and communicate as much as possible. Things are changing so quickly. Yeah. We can't leave it for a week for them to work out what's happening in Victoria, what's happening at our service, how are we changing drop off and pick up. So listening and empathizing. Yeah, that's, that's tremendous. That's very helpful. Thank you, Tom. Let's turn into the center. So you, you've been operating your service for four or five years. You've developed um, a, a really proactive, um, um, customer friendly, productive culture. Yep, you've got a great team and a great culture. Yep. You go through an experience like this. How do you maintain that culture? How do you keep the team buoyant, positive, optimistic, engaged? Can't be easy with all this news and noise swirling around. How would you manage that? Yeah, well, it's the other relationships in the service and that's the relationships with the staff. And yeah. as much as, you know, there are pressures on rostering, um, all of these people have got lives outside of the centre and their partners, you know, their circumstances, they might have lost somebody's income as well. So the uncertainty that they have is, you know, a, a brings a level of anxiety in their general life before yeah. they even show up to work. So again, it's the same formula about staying close and empathising. Now, lots of tough decisions have been made about cutting hours, putting people off for a while. Um, and these can be made, they're understandable because nobody's kind of ignorant to what's happening, but yeah. they don't care what's happening with the business. They, they, they care about, and this is what I hear as well, is that people can't believe how selfish some employees are, but they're just thinking about themselves. And, you know, we've got to put ourselves in the shoes of some of these millennials and it's frustrating as leaders, but at the same time, they are the front line for delivering those relationships and empathizing with families. And if they're feeling hard done by, they're disengaging and they're not showing up and, and, and managing those relationships and looking after the, the, you know, the care they provide with that 10 out of 10 attitude. So this is, this is the toughest time to be a leader. This yeah. is kind of like crisis management. On both sides, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to manage the business, but you've got to manage the people and the relationships and it's incredibly draining. And like, I don't know, you've got, there's nothing left in the tank at the end of the day. Yeah. So maybe a glass of wine to get you through. But the good thing about this, I think, is that 
um, most of the country in March were facing lockdowns and yeah. it was every time we looked at the news, it was horrible. And fortunately for the majority of Australia, we're, we're through that now yeah. and life is better. We can go to the sport in Queensland. Now, yeah. Victoria, I can't imagine where they're at again. It's Groundhog Day, but we'll get through this. And Great. so it's about doing as much as you can for those relationships for the staff now yeah. to kind of firm things up so the wheels don't fall off with those relationships and the kind of service levels and the culture down the track. Great, that's terrific. I'm a little conscious of time. I've got one more question. Let's fast forward a bit, a little bit, a little bit like we did with David. Let's think about next year, yeah? Competition is gonna heat up again, particularly if demand levels and occupancy levels are down in your catchment, in your communities, yeah? yeah. How do you effectively differentiate your service from the competition? Are there any tips you could give any of our listeners about this notion of differentiation? Yeah, well, look, we saw this globally with the GFC where there was a reduction in kind of um, demand. So banking sector, financial services, automotive, there was less people buying. Yep. And this is where customer experience actually got a foot in the door and you saw banks change where you could have a banker come to your house. You, could, yeah. you didn't have to line up behind the screen and you know they open longer hours. So um, essentially the one thing everybody can differentiate on is the quality of their experience. And what that means is it's the quality of the relationships. Now, there's no magic bullet to this. It starts with your culture and your people, but it's putting that at the front of mind. Yeah. So, um, you know, like I said at the beginning, it's this listening, the ability to listen and act on feedback. Yeah. Now, you don't need a survey program to do that staying as close as possible to those customers and keep moving. Um, and always thinking about the customer's perspective. So we had to change a lot of operations to have drop off and pick up at the front door. Now that's stressful for children who are you know, connected to the educator in the room. They don't get that communication. So just adjusting and calling the parents. And, and I've seen a lot of our clients kind of just change that process, but show that they care. So customer first that what that will do is it'll maintain the occupancy that you can retain yeah. and then it's all about you know getting more of that market share back because you've shown that you care when it yeah. mattered and yeah. um you know essentially that's going to mean that when things do bounce you're going to get your fair share or yeah. more than competitors got you lovely tom that's your three thank you very much